This week I'm having a nitro cold brew. It's full of energy and is a great way to start your day with a joy. Kind of like my very special next guest from Good Morning Football, Peter Schrager. This is a cup of Joey with me, Joey Molinero. Peter Schrager, Good Morning Football. We linked up, my man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. What, uh, what are you drinking on? Okay, so I'm a huge coffee guy. First of all, this is a mug. This is good. This is I cute. love it. Um, is that a flower or is that yeah, a... Yeah, no, it's a flower, dude. Okay. It's great. Uh, my deal is this. I typically live in Brooklyn, New York, and I am a bit of a coffee snob. I will go to the independent coffee house or like the small coffee shop and see the hipsters, all the stereotypes you see, or, and or. I will get my order and everything. Um, we've been bouncing around a bit because of quarantine. We moved out of Brooklyn for a little while. We were living with my in-laws in Baltimore. Then we moved out to Long Island in a rental house. We're currently in a rental house in Long Island. And I'm just going back to what, what I'm made of. And it's Starbucks, medium roast, put it in the Keurig, pop it in, press the button, let it simmer, put it in the fridge, get some ice, put in some almond milk, and away we go. Okay, so you take it from hot to then make it cold. You don't just do straight up cold brew. I would if I had, like, you can go into the store and buy that nice jug with the green lid of the Starbucks or the Khalifa Farms, if you will, um, of the cold brew. But it, really, there's something to just putting it in the Keurig, letting it have its moment, hot, putting it in the fridge, dropping in some ice, and then when it hits your lips, dude, it is special. Right. It's Frank the Tank. It's just mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many you put down in the morning? Because, I mean, you got to be up early, so you, you got to be sleeping all day. Um, my wife and I never argue about anything. Our biggest point of, you know, contention is how much coffee I drink. And we're trying to scale it back in the quarantine a little bit, but I'm up at 4.30 every morning, get to the studio in a typical situation for Good Morning Football. We'll drink a Trenta sized iced coffee before 6 a.m. The Trenta is the biggest. And then I'll probably have one more of that size later in the afternoon to just keep me up so I can play with my son. So there's something bigger than Vin. I had no idea there's something yes. bigger than Vin. Dude, it is like unlocking the code for us hardcore Starbucks drinkers. It is called Trenta size. You've got to ask for it. And like the barista will look at you and like wink and be like, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. It's one of those. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Nice. Yeah. I've already, well, I already got mine today. So I'm going to have to use that tomorrow. The Trenta special. The Trenta. Right. Trenta. What do you go with? Do you go with iced with a non fat milk? What do we got? Yeah. It's, it's weird. Like, <clears throat> you know, I, I made that transition when I was when I was younger, right? And I, I like getting in college, and I was like, "Ah, coffee, I don't really know." Then I started yeah. drinking it, and I was like, "I'll just drink like black and just get used to it." And then I got to a point where I was like, "I don't know about iced coffee. That's kind of weird." And then I made the transition to iced coffee, and now it doesn't matter if it's Christmas Day, you know, a blizzard in February. Like, I'm I'm having iced coffee all the time. I have an actual story from it. Um... I don't know if you remember the Seahawks played the Vikings in a playoff game and it was the at the college stadium at like TCF oh, yeah. field. It's the Blair Walsh game. Blair Walsh misses the kick. Yep. It was a chippy and the Seahawks go on to win. It was negative 20 that day. It was the coldest recorded playoff game. And I walked into the stadium. I was working for Fox Sports or NFL Network or one of them. And I had the Trenta sized iced coffee. And I'll never forget Tom Pelissero, who was a local reporter for the Minnesota, whatever it was at the time, was like, I didn't even know him that well. He's like, dude, that is sick. Like, what are you thinking? I'm like, I can't. I'm a, it's, I need the ice. I don't even touch. Like, I think hot coffee is disgusting. Iced is all I can drink. And, you know, you're, you're in a race against time with hot coffee. That's what I, I, know. That's what I found. And that, and that makes it just not fun. You know, because you have the, you touch it to your lips for the first time, it's scolding hot and you got to sit on it. But then by the time you sit on it, it's too cold. Mine no, I'm with you. Coffee. Exactly right. And it's not pleasant. It goes down, it hurts. It's hot. You could burn yourself. If you spill it, it's a real mistake. Iced coffee, it's delicious. I love that you're a fellow iced coffee drinker. To that, we'll do this. Great. Cheers, my friend. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we talked about how we were trying to link up in the combine when it, when it was in town yeah. you know, like it is every year. And you know, you, you had the all security access. You're like the <laughs> president and Lucas oil couldn't get to you. Um, but you, you definitely know your way around Indianapolis. You said that Bakersfield off Mass Ave is a spot. <laughs> what, what else we got? Well, first off, I came across your stuff on Twitter as most people did. And yeah. I'd seen you do a couple of imitations. I'm like, this guy's good. And then you did the Clay Travis with the shirt pull. Yeah. And I was like, that is so nuanced. That is so <laughs> next level. I'm like, this guy is 
amazing because I will watch Clay's stuff online um, and it'll be the Periscope, whatever, and it's always this. What we're going to be talking about today is why NBA ratings are down. Woke Center wants to keep feeding everyone these lies on Twitter. But when you nailed the Clay Travis shirt pull, I don't, it was next level, dude. So I'm like, I got to find this guy. Found sure. out you lived in Indianapolis, yep. hit you up. Um, I, 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 I'm actually sad about uh, a lot of things with the world right now. But one thing that really like thinking about the future, I, I don't know if the combine is going to be what it was. And when I say that, not the players running on the field, it is the coolest four days of hang sessions you can imagine for someone in my job. Like I've got a phone somewhere that's got just about every head coach, general manager in my phone. Yeah. Combine, I am like the hot chick at the uh, at the dance because I'm texting everyone. Everyone's texting me back, where are you? What you doing? What are you doing? And there's no cooler thing than like getting dinner with Sean McVay at a cool restaurant in Indianapolis and having everyone walk by and be like, woo, Schrager's got dinner with McVay. But it's not even about that. It's actual friendships. And like, I don't see these guys during the year. And when it's football season and it's hardcore November, December, like if I'm doing a Rams game, it's not going to be the same thing as off season where those guys are laid back. So I, I, I th at any given moment in Prime 47 or St. Elmo's, which are the name ones, um, you'll have 200 NFL people, coaches, GMs, media, all just hanging out, drinking beers, having a good time and forget the information you get, just the friendships and the relationship building and just the laughs. Like, I don't know if that's going to be the case in March and I, I'm sad about it. Dude, that was my first experience really. Like, you know, growing up here, I, I you know, when the combine was in town, I always thought it was cool. They'd have the posters up. Like you knew the NFL world was in my town, but last year or this past year, was the first time that I had a Prime 47 experience. Mm -hmm. The first time that I had these little niche bars that I found out where people were at, you know, because I was lucky enough to like be included. This Kilroy's. Time. You know, Kilroy's, like uh, the, <laughs> uh, the, what's the one of JW Marriott, right by where the uh, Big Three Field, uh, High Velocity. High Velocity, you, you think it's a sports movie? bar. No, it's the greatest gathering spot at 2 a.m. at the JW Marriott in Indianapolis. And oh it's right across yeah. the baseball field, yeah. But Prime 47, I felt like I was in like football Goodfellas. Like yeah. when I walked in there, like I, I, you know, it's so packed and literally everywhere you look, you got Peter Schrager, you got Rich Eisen, you got Mike Rabel, you got uh, uh, MJ Acosta, you got, it's like. Can it, I tell you, can I tell you the Prime 47 setup? So I've been, I mean, literally I've been doing it 10 years and it used to be, um, it was, it was something else before, but now it's Prime 47 and the back corner, and he would hate me for saying this, but there's an agent, a coach's agent named Bob Lamont, and he is the coach's agent to all the top coaches, and he has that table rented. There's another corner for a player agent named David Cantor, who is hilarious and represents a lot of top players, uh, Demarcus Lawrence and Olivier Verne, and they send in their own wine. It's a fascinating scene. And as you know, you'll see Sean Payton sitting at a table. You'll see Bruce Arians. You'll see Mike Tomlin with a cigar, and it's like, I know that Bill Barnwell, I think, did a story like about the combine experience, but in this day of like TMZ and Deadspin and all this stuff of like social media, it is amazing that everyone can still get together and be themselves and not have everyone close it off. And the only way it could end was the freaking COVID-19 coronavirus, which is gonna put a halt to all of this, which is a bummer. I know, I know, man, it really is. You mentioned Sean Payton. I had to perform in front of the entire Saints organization at Prime 47 this past year. Tell me and about this. Dude, they, I've not heard this story. <laughs> yeah, so the Saints apparently they do like, uh, you know, their front office team yeah. dinner at Prime every year. All the coaches, you know, the media people. And, and wait, I'll talk about in the auxiliary room. There's the main exactly. room and then there's the side room. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like you, you walk in, you got Go the right the main room to the left is the auxiliary <laughs> where it feels like you're like walking into like a mob meeting. Yes. So the whole entire Saints organization is there. They they, they give me a, a, a Saints visor, a Saints uh, quarter zip because they wanted me to try to impersonate Sean Payton. You've heard Sean Payton talk. He's not he's got a little twang, but he, yeah. he's not it's like- It's not an easy, it's not an easy, it's not Gruden. It, yeah, it's not Gruden, it's not O, oh, it's not even Tomlin, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's just kind of like a regular guy. And so, man, I walk out there and I just, I bombed. I, I, I bombed. Did you ever do stand-up comedy at any point? Yeah, 
So you did yeah. do stand-up comedies. Because yeah. I'm like, I think there's this feeling that like, you know, you get, you gotta eat shit sometimes, right? And like, oh. you don't want to, but like, and I can imagine doing this and if it falls flat with not a single laugh and everyone's looking at each other, you just feel the pressure, right? Oh, but but okay, so that's what happened is I knew going in, I was like, I don't have a great Peyton. If I pull something out of my ass and they kind of chuckle or whatever, I'm like, beautiful, but I have a backup plan. So I walk in there, they all clap and everything and <laughs> start getting into it and nothing, dude. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, so yeah. i immediately switched from that i dropped the peyton impersonation and then i just started making fun of sean peyton so it became, okay it became a roast of sean peyton okay it started getting some laughs and then i went into like coach o and like saban and kuiper and everything and then that they like, love oh okay yeah. then they we get it getting, we get it yeah but the first minute and a half was just absolutely brutal luckily i recovered i earned my meal you know that they gave me for free there as a part of it but uh it was wild, man. But then from after that, that's when I made up my way over to the yeah. main room and, and was having a great time. Yeah, so that's the main spot. But like we were talking in there. So there's a restaurant called Bakersfield, which is not in that block. I don't know Indianapolis geography where I would tell you what that, but it's like a little bit uptown. Like our trendy, you know, street of bars. That's your Brooklyn. Um, we have, I've had probably three different meals where I've gotten the biggest news I've had in an off season at Bakersfield and it's my call I'll be like let's go to this place Bakersfield and everyone is so ready to leave that that giant crush of people and they want to have their own like it's almost like it's a getaway so I've done stuff there there's a little pizza bar we talked about on Pearl Street called Pearl Street Pizza I want to say what's that yep, called yep. Pearl Street Pizza yeah, yeah it's yep. in an alleyway and it's like a little thing off here and it's got great pizza no one knows about it it's that was perfect. made to get scoops because you're like hidden you yeah, know, yeah. There. It, it does. And then the last one is a new addition, a steakhouse that was brought in this year. What's it called? It's a new one. And oh, I saw everyone. Hide, I'm, What's it called? Hide, hide uh, Tony's. Tony's. So I walk into Tony's and I'll just say it is. I was meeting Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kime, who's the head coach and GM of the Cardinals, meeting them for a drink, thinking this is like an unknown spot. I walk in and the table next to us is Mike Tarico. John Gruden and uh, Greg Olson, who's the offensive coordinator. And the table behind that is Doug Marone, Bill O'Brien, and Mike Vrabel. And then the table behind that uh, was two other NFL head coaches. And I'm like, all right, so the secret's out on this place. But it was, it was, it was fantastic. But that's the beauty of the combine and also the beauty of Indianapolis. Everything is walking distance. Yep. You get there in freezing cold weather, and mm -hmm. it's all right there. And I, I heard you interviewing Daniel Jeremiah, and he's talking about cranking tape and doing all this stuff. And that's all noble work. I don't know shit about that. I know about what I get at those restaurants. That's the job for me, which is second nature. I yeah, love it. Yeah, DJ DJ's so pure and wholesome, you know, while everybody's going great. to front and having a great time with cigars and everything. He's having he's, chocolate he's milk. Locked, yeah, he's locked up in, uh, yeah. in, his, in his room breaking down tape. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta appreciate it, man. But um, I, gotta, I gotta say thanks, first of all, um, because you and Good Morning Football have made my wife like football more okay talk about that because i yeah. love hearing that yes so uh you know we're living together even before we got married and we we're getting married i would always throw you guys on in the morning it was a nice old routine get my day started with good morning football like so many people do i'm sure and she'd be out there with me and then she would always be like um yeah you know um i like these guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> like they're, they're like they're like she's like k is so cute and like Kyle and Peter, they they go back and forth and they're funny. And I don't really know what they're talking about. Yeah. So thank you guys. You know, yeah. I like that's kind of what you guys uh, do it for a little bit. I need to hear that every so often because we live and breathe it. It's it's five days a week, three hours a day. We are so blessed. We're so lucky to do it. But we're so in the weeds of like, all right, at eight ten this morning, we're having a Jaguars conversation about which wide receiver is going to step up, DJ Chark or Lavishka Chenault, and then find a way to 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 get the the, the Washington football team back to where they were. And is it Chase Young or is the offense? And then you pull back and you're like, that's all good and well, but like, just have fun, be happy. And like, that's what people want to watch in the morning because for a while there, like, you know, the country, like everything we get news wise is so negative and so negative. And August started, players are coming back to camp. And we kind of had a discussion amongst the four hosts and we're like, let's just stick to the football like maybe they're gonna have a season maybe they will let's pretend like they're gonna have a season and let's at least go on that basis and talk ball and we've gotten so many great responses being like thank you for not every 
morning on a sports show being a political discourse on you know what's right and what's wrong and just talking about football and i don't know if that's taking the easy way out but it's certainly a far more enjoyable watch than the the alternative no man hell no people come to like those the segments you guys do your big segment show you guys got a lot of segments that you do how many how many whiteboard segments do you guys like have to have in, the, in a day or like a week? yeah so we'll do like multiple whiteboard. We love a whiteboard. It's an easy, cheap prop. And basically you pull up a little mini whiteboard and you write at something and it's ha ha ha. But the segments that really hit, we each kind of have our own segments. And this year, Kyle and I found something that I that just took off. It was the Wall Streeters segment where our, our studio is actually overlooking Wall Street. So when we walk to the office every day at five in the morning, Kyle and I would see all these Wall Street guys and they're like absurd. We, we know some in our real lives, but they, as a mass of people walking off the subway, the Wall Street guy is an incredible archetype. And it's been mocked a few times, but like Kyle and I like really dug in on it. And we played two Wall Street traders who are trading stocks on teams. And uh, I would kind of play it straight and just talk about my Hamptons house and, and how, uh, you know, I went to summer camp with this guy and he's now the CEO of that. And then Kyle goes off the rails and uh, does a lot of stuff that's probably not safe for television, but no one's watching at that hour, so we get away with it. Um, that's our like favorite segment, and it sucks because it doesn't really work when you're sitting in a basement uh, with a kid on your lap doing the sure. Wall Street guy. But we're gonna try to figure it out. Um, but we are a segment-based show. Nate's got something called Toe Drag Swag. Yeah. Every week we show the best catches. Kyle does something called Angry Runs, and like yep. thing with our show, if you don't watch it, it's on NFL Network. Even if the audience at home is watching first take or first things first or whatever the competition is or the Today Show, the NFL watches it. So like that enough for us, we're like the industry show. So everyone in the NFL, coaches, GMs, players, it's on in their buildings and that's how they start their day. So if we can at least entertain those folks and not make it so negative, we're happy with that. What about what about a NFL, like instead of a good morning show, you know, it's like a tonight show. Is yeah, a late night one. Yeah. Oh, what do you What do you think? I feel like we've tried sports and comedy so many times. Joey, do you know how many times I've been in pitch meetings where it's it's like the Daily Show, but it's for sports. I literally, for the last decade, really? I've been in thirty meetings where I've heard that from a network executive or an agent or someone, and I've been pitched that I should be a part of it as a writer or something like. So here's the thing: it's like John Oliver, but it's sports, and it's like. Politics is something different. Like people like to poke holes in politics. It's, it's sick in our country. People take their sports teams far more serious. Sacred cat. Like we don't want to make fun of Ben Roethlisberger. We don't want to make fun. That's of, like, not true. You guys we, all make fun of Ben Roethlisberger. Look at the shirt that I'm wearing right now, Peter. I know. I see, and I know you're his biggest fan. The Revenge I Tour. Just, I wore it just for you guys because I got to stand up for it. Because Good Morning Football and a lot of your colleagues have some beef with Big Ben. They have some beef with the Steelers. I don't know what it is. Can you yeah. tell me? Not me. Like, I, I feel like there's a there's a big contingent out there that thinks that, that we're anti-Steelers. I don't know. I, I got crap a couple years ago because during the Antonio Brown fiasco, I took the Steelers side and everyone said I was being against the player and uh, you're always siding with the team and you're not going to replace Antonio Brown. I felt like I might have been right on that one. Maybe it was best to get rid of AB. We'll see what happens this season with a healthy... Uh, but there's no anti... We had Mike Tomlin on the show today. I know, and I watched that and that was very good. But Mike Tomlin's something different. Like, you, did you have a run-in with Big Ben? Like, what... what you think what, me personally? I, me and Big Ben are good. I've met him. We're good. And not me personally. Might be the other... I don't know where you're getting that from. Me and Ben are good. What about Nate? Nate has something with, with Big Ben. I don't know. I don't know. I you do know. See, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Sport... You sound like a crazy person on Twitter who would be tweeting about Trump all day long. <laughs> That's what sports fans like. The, like. You're a normal, rational guy, and yet you have this pretend buy. Like that, that Good Morning Football. Does, good morning. We like everyone. I mean, we're, we're, we get criticized for liking too many people. You could be the you know the, the worst team in the league. We're gonna tell you you got a chance for the Super Bowl. So I think we're good to Ben. I don't know if you could find a specific example that would have made that a lot easier. Nate had to take before the draft that he thought that Big Ben was trying to manipulate them to not draft a quarterback. Where does he get this stuff? <laughs> well, that's just Nate pulling shit out of his ass. That, that's what that is. What, 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 I mean, what are we doing in these production meetings? Come that's on. It. That's it. I'm just, I'm, just mess, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just messing with you, but seriously, uh, that's good to know. That's, I'm glad that you're on that AB side because I've been on that train from literally day one. Yeah. 
Where'd you guys yeah. stand on the Minka? Uh, I know, I know, you guys had to been like, what are they doing with the Minka trade? No, I'm not, I'm always on the side of I'd rather have a player than um, the draft pick. I've always been that way, and I, I do think this with the Minka thing. It was like that one was a weird one because he's not a talker. He's not a big look at me guy. Yeah, and when he. Brian Flores, the whole thing was so weird. And yeah. then it worked out perfectly because Tomlin's the perfect coach for him and Minka was great. But like, I still think his mother was out there talking. Like it was a very weird deal because that's not Minka Fitzpatrick to be like a look at me. Yeah. I'm, you know, But Minka Fitzpatrick worked out perfectly. I, I think you're going to look back on last year's season as a Steelers fan and like have a fondness for it. It was such a weird season. And like, oh, you'll, sure. hear, you'll hear the name Duck Hodges and you'll be like, yeah, Duck, that was pretty cool. That Chargers win was pretty good. Like you'll have a good place in your heart for it. I texted my, my dad, I think like, man, I can't remember what game it was, but I was like, this is the most fun I've had with the Steelers team in probably like 10 years. It was just because there was like, you went in, there was no expectation every week, really. You know, your defense was just flying around. Whatever you got at offense was just freaking icing on top of the cake. It was a blast. It was so a fun year. It. Yeah, fun year. it was. Um, I got, um, you guys are your segment-based show. I got a few suggestions maybe. Okay. Let's Hear me out. Um, what if you guys did, like, what TikTok dance a coach would be? Like, what mm. what TikTok dance would describe a coach? Okay, this is where – this is a major, major blind spot for me on a show that's supposed to be hip with pop culture. Yeah. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok. And a lot of times, things like a TikTok dance, like Nate and Kyle and Kay will know, and I've got to, like, kind of, like, grin and bear it and, like, yeah, 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 yeah the TikTok dance. But, like – wouldn't even know the different, like there's Fortnite dances, right? Like I wouldn't even know where to start with that. I, I, okay, well, I'm just saying like, I think if you educate yourself a little bit more on it, you can find them on Twitter, they're on there too. Okay. But I think that if you rolled that out like TikTok Tuesday. Okay, I yeah? like this. Like, like, I like TikTok this. Tuesday and then that's where you go through. Trademark. You, you have Whiteboard Wednesday, you have TikTok Tuesday. That would be the most serious segment on our show, which would be good. <laughs> like, that would be the Kyle line. would go. Kyle would go insane with it. I he know. would have his, the whole. I know his style, circuits. I know all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about just like comparing anyone to Zion? So like yeah. in any situation, just Zion's not even a bat football player, but just use his height and his weight and just be like. I don't know. Would he be like Gronk if he played football? Good. I like it. It's exactly. It's it's very much in line with our show. For no reason, we will name a random at. Well, you know, hey, look, he reminds me a little bit of Danny Ferry when he was playing. Like, we'll do that, man. Just to enter, <laughs> just to entertain ourselves. Like, you know, there's a little bit of Arvita Sabonis, not the younger one, but the older, like the way he looks, <laughs> and he's got that finesse. But yes, comparing things to the NBA and especially Zion, which is the new like, wow, he's like football's LeBron is going to be, he's like football Zion. Like that's going to be the thing that everyone goes to and it's going to be very easy to do. Right. Um, okay. What about, um, it's from a competitor, but uh, something very popular right now is like, yeah, yeah. Like all his different like reactions and like him doing this and everything. So it's just which Stephen A would blank be, you know, whether it's a play or a team or a player, you know what I mean? Like uh, the, the, you use a Stephen A uh, mask. I like it. To describe what that is. I love it. It's would a fantastic, it's a fantastic idea. We probably can't because of the whole ESPN is our rivals. They're on against us, but I we, we can cross over for this. We're in the quarantine. I think all rules are out the window about that kind of stuff. I'm in, I like it. I think Stephen A's like he's just like ubiquitous, bigger. right? Yeah, like, yeah. He's just like the internet, you know. I mean, I he know. Works for ESPN, but people who don't even like sports know who Stephen A is because I know, I know. I don't know. Uh, those are just three that I had. It's great. Uh, I, I think TikTok Tuesday. I'm serious. That could, you know, TikTok that. Tuesday works. I kind of like the uh, the Zion one, and and you've got to like it's almost like an inside joke to the viewer. You keep a tally of how many times we compare guys to Zion. So it's like Gronk is. He looks like Zion out there. And then two minutes later, it's Aaron Donald. Just he pulled a Zion and just completely just made the move to the hoop. And, you know, we could exactly. do that. I like that. Perfect. Cool. And then um, two more. Lastly, well, you go on the herd a lot. Yeah. Can you can you can you pull out a Buck Collin or like at least give me a little, you know, wink to, to me the next time you're on there? 
Yeah, I, I love your Colin. Have you and Colin had interactions? Like, he would like it, I think. I think he would appreciate no, we have, it. That's one that, like, it's so weird because he's talked about it on his show. He has, okay. Uh, my, my boss, Eric Nardini, went on his Saturday special podcast. And okay. Said, you know we have an impersonator of you. And he was like, oh, God, yeah, Joey, it's so funny. And like, okay. you know, like. But so I also work with Colin. Listen, I also work with Colin on Sundays for our Fox NFL kickoff show. I fly out to L.A. And I spend like four hours straight with Colin in the morning and it's not on TV. It's like Colin off camera. And he's one of the most fascinating people. Like if you, I can't even, I, cause everyone will roll their eyes. Say, oh, I know Colin Coward. I'm like, Colin's mind works in a way that is so unlike any other mind. Like he just jumps like boom, boom, boom. And you know, the analogies he makes to the guys shopping in the fruit. That's real life. That's how he handles it. And like, he'll out of nowhere be like, you live in New York, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what is the thought in New York about second homes in Florida versus say Utah or, and I'm like, is, are you in the market? And he's like, no, I'm just curious the global perspective on this, or he'll talk about like tax rates or the Colin's always thinking his mind is always on and he's always watching sports. Like it's amazing. He's always watching sports. We'll come in on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and like Dave wants that on the show and be like, oh, saw Oregon just beat, beat yeah. Cal. And like Colin will be like, yeah, Herbert, fourth quarter, like da 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 da, -da like rattles it off. Right. Um, you have to like, and he's not self-serious. Waiting for the invite. Maybe, you know, if we get uh, enough people like you and Joy to kind of like, you know, push that there, we could have, we could have some fun together. So I'm just, I'm just saying. I'll give you up. a nod. Um, I'm trying to think about another Colin thing that like people don't know. I, I, Colin is just like, He's, his exposure and his platform is also so big that when I go on Colin, it's a whole different audience than Good Morning Football or when I'm on sidelines. And like, I'll walk down the street in New York City and it's never like, hey, great segment on, New on Good Morning Football about the Giants. It's always like, love you on the herd. And I'm like, I, you have to appreciate that. So he's got a huge audience coast to coast. Yeah. I, absolutely, I've, I've been trying to tap into that. I know it very well. <laughs> All right, last thing, last thing man. Um, Putting you on the spot, football or no? Yes, uh, emphatic yes. They're trying everything they can to make this happen. I, 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 I think it's gonna happen. They're gonna kick off. How about that? And there's, everyone said, oh, why is the NFL trying the draft? The draft was a great success. Why would the NFL do free agency? People needed to see free agency. The schedule. Why would they put out a schedule in May? Schedule. Every team I know is taking this very seriously. I mean, it is rigorous. It, a lot of this stuff I'm hearing, it's not fun to be in an NFL building right now because you're being secluded from all your colleagues. You're being checked for everything. You're being tested every single day. It's certainly not the summer camp feel that training camp usually is. Like, right. it, they can't put it in a bubble. They're going to try. And I feel like they're going to kick off. I really do. Yeah. Whether we could keep the season going the whole way, we'll see. That would have to be if there's a crazy amount of outbreaks and that would be bad for the whole country as a whole. But... I am optimistic. I really am. I think there's going to be football week one. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Any fans? No fans at all? 15%? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to vary. I'll tell you this. About a month ago, I got a lot of good info on stuff. And there were some plans that, like, you know, in certain buildings, we're going to try. Um, numbers then went big the last couple of weeks. And then we'll have to see. We're still three weeks or four weeks away from this. Uh I don't know. And I don't know how it's going to be in those states. Like, I heard a rumor that sideline reporters might not be on the field to start the season. They might have to be in the first row of the stadium because they want to keep distance. Like, there's a lot of little nuances to the on-field experience and the in-stadium experience. And I am not sure how they're going to roll that all out. And to me, no preseason games. Everyone's talking about the players. Like, these teams have no idea how to put on an NFL game with no fans in an empty stadium yet. And there's going to be no trial run. So week one could be fascinating in a lot of ways. I love it. Perfect. That's just for, for people like you and me, that's just constant, <laughs> constant content there, my man. I love content. It. Let's just hope uh, everyone stays healthy, dude. Peter Schrager, good morning football. Fox, you see him, you love him. Cheers. Dude, I appreciate you for everything you're doing. And I love that you're expanding beyond just the imitations. Very cool to see. Thank you, my guy. We'll talk soon. Please do.